Welcome to day four notes, our last set of notes on plate tectonics. So we're going to get right into the notes. So first of all, we, we've talked about the plates and we've talked about how the lithosphere is all the cross in the very top part of the mantle. And we've taken a look at the various types, you know, the various plates, the North American plate, the South American plates, the Pacific plate. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at how those plates interact because they're all moving. And sometimes, and they don't all move in the same direction. Sometimes they'll move towards each other. Sometimes they'll move away from each other. Sometimes they'll just slide past each other. So as you can see in these diagrams off to the right, there's, there's three main types of plate boundaries. There's divergent plate boundaries. And think of something as dividing. If something divides, you know, if I'm going to divide the crowd in half, I, I'm separating them. I'm moving them apart. Convergent means you're coming together so if, if if we were to converge that means we, we come together and from the last picture you probably figured out that the plates are sliding past each other and this is a what they call a transformed fault boundary now there's actually a fourth type of plate boundary but because it's not well defined we will not spend a lot of time talking about it and what they do is they, they, they call these plate boundary zones and these are broad belts in which the boundaries are not well defined. And the effects of plate tectonic, the plate interactions, they're really unclear. So there are some places on Earth where scientists really don't know what exactly is happening. you got to remember, these plates are only moving a few centimeters a year. So it's going to take a long, long time for people to really understand what's happening with these plates. And, you know, as, as a human, we're only around for 100 years or so. And if, if they're only moving a few centimeters a year in your lifetime, again, they're only moving a few meters. So it, it's hard to really understand what's happening to them. You know, if we could have recorded, you know, the last million years or so, and if we could record it and play it back and play it and fast forward, yeah, then we would probably know what's happening with all the plate boundaries. But we can't do that. Okay. So there are some places that are not well defined and we're not going to spend a lot of time with them because, well, they're not defined. The scientists really don't know what's happening there. I like this picture because on this picture you can see all the different types of plate interactions. You have your divergent plate boundaries. This might be the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It just says mid-ocean ridge here. But you can see that the plates are moving apart. Now, if the plates are moving apart, more than likely, at some point in time, at some place, you're going to have plates coming together. And then right here is interesting. You actually have plates sliding past each other. So on this one picture, you'll see a diagram of all three types of plate interactions happening. So here again, we take a look at the pictures and from um, a map, and we can see from these pictures where different things are happening. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about each of these plate interactions. Um, the plate tectonic process. Do you remember when we talked about convection currents? Scientists believe that these plates are moving. The lithospheric plates are moving because deep, deep inside the Earth. And different geologists have different theories as to where this heat's coming. But a lot of geologists theorize that the heat's coming from the outer core. And that that heat, because the magma is now less dense, it's rising up. And because it's, oop, not sure what happened there. Oop, here we have it back. So as it's rising up, it becomes, you know, it's less dense, and that's why it's rising. It starts to cool off, and it starts to create these huge currents. And it's moving in this direction. So where these plates are both coming up and spreading apart, this is where you have spreading happening. And this is where the plates are moving apart. Where you might have two currents coming together, this is where you have plates coming together. And it's these convection currents, or scientists believe that these convection currents have a lot to do with plate tectonics and the plate interactions and why they move and how they move in the way that they do. Now, two plates moving away from each other create something called a tension force. Um, if, has you, have you ever had a rubber band? Have you ever like tried stretching the rubber band until it breaks? Well, when you pull on that rubber band, you're actually creating tension. And so it's kind of the same way where the plates, they're pulling apart, they create something that scientists say is a tension force. And where this happens, new crust is formed as magma moves to the surface. So as the plates are moving apart, you're not left with a huge hole. Your new magma comes up 
And some scientists theorize that it's this new magma that's rising that's actually pushing the plates together or might have um, a little to do with that and a lot to do with the um, this right here, the convection current. So you can see right here where the plate, the magma is coming up, creating new plates. Some scientists theorize that because this is being pushed up, that it's kind of like going to the top of the hill and now it's, it's moving itself down. So it probably has a lot to do with both those concepts. And earthquakes and volcanoes are frequent here. So you're going to have earthquakes where you're going to have plates moving apart. You're going to have volcanoes because new magma is coming up to the surface of the earth. So here we can see in this diagram as the plates are moving up, you can see the mid-ocean ridge right above where the plates spreading apart. So magma comes up as it splits and moves apart. This is what's going to be moving the plates. Now typically, this is an interesting phenomenon where typically you have your mid-ocean ridges and again this is where plates are moving apart. This typically happens at the bottom of the oceans but every once in a while it happens on land and this little place right here this is the island of Iceland. It's, it, it's a country and it's one of the few places on our planet where you actually can see divergent plate boundaries happening on land. Now, was this land always here? No, it was probably created when you had lots of volcanoes, and Iceland still has lots of volcanoes. I would pronounce a few for you, but they have some pretty wild and weird names. But as it's spreading apart, these volcanoes, this magma that's rising is creating volcanoes, and that lava created this huge island. So it's just kind of interesting. You don't often see this happening on land, so it's, it gives geologists a chance to see it for themselves without having to go to the bottom of the ocean. This is actually another spot where the plate's starting to spread together and this is the East African Rift. So here you can see that happening right here and it's kind of interesting. The Red Sea, this might be what the Atlantic Ocean looked like a long time ago. Remember back in day one notes where we looked at Pangaea? At one point in time, Pangaea split, and Pangaea, part of Pangaea, you know, North America went one way, and what was the top part, remember that Laurasia back then, actually went the other way. And what happened was the Atlantic Ocean formed in between, and over time, the Atlantic Ocean became wider and wider and wider. So this Red Sea might be the making of a new Atlantic Ocean. And it's kind of interesting, a lot of times where this happens, you have the Gulf of Aden, you have the Red Sea. This actually forms approximately a 120 degree angle. So if we looked at this, it's not going to be exact, but it's about 120 degrees. And you know, 120 degrees is one of those interesting degrees. You tend to find that a lot in nature. And what scientists have found where this happens, typically two of them take off and the other one fails. And the one that's failing is this one right here. You might say, well, how is it failing? You know, it's, it's creating this great rift valley. Well, you're going to have some action going on. You're going to have the plates moving apart a little bit, but ultimately it's going to fail. It's the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden that these plates are going to eventually move apart and create, and obviously it's connected right here, so it's already connected, and it's probably going to eventually split up in here into the Mediterranean Sea. So eventually Africa is going to be moving away from the Arabian Plate. And will you see some action in here? Sure. Now, one of the interesting things, first of all, you notice how all these lakes are really long and elongated? They probably weren't there in the past. It's this rifting that's happening that's creating these long, long lakes. And right now, the only thing that's holding back the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, because this is lower right now, is you got Somalia. You've got the highlands of Somalia. For some reason, something happens, or over time, weathering erosion could you know, remove a lot of those highlands. Water could flow into this area and a lot of this could be flooded. So here we see some of that rifting and it would be one of those things It's you know I've never been to Africa but I, I think it would be interesting to walk through here. Um, are there some volcanoes in this area? Yes. Um, do you have earthquakes in this area? Yes. And is it going to continue to move further and further apart? It, it, it's it's going to move further and further apart. There are going to be some geological changes happening here. 
but geologists theorize that it's, it's not going to be dramatic. It's not going to ultimately be like this right here. Sorry for all the red that I drew on there. It's not going to be like the Red Sea. It's not going to be making of a new ocean, but it is dramatic nonetheless. Let's talk about convergent boundaries. Now, this is when two plates are moving towards each other. If two plates come towards each other, each other, they call it a compression force. Like if you press on something, you know, that's that's two things pushing on each other, it creates a compression force. And something happens there and they call it a subduction zone. And this is when an oceanic plate is forced under a less dense continental plate. So when we look at this, we're gonna refer back to our rocks unit in just a little bit. But this is where old crust is being removed. If we remember in part three of our notes, we talked about how on the ocean floor, scientists in the Atlantic Ocean did not find any rock older than 200 million years old. And the reason for that was old crust is being removed. So when we look at this picture, what's happening is you have an ocean, oceanic plate coming this way, you have a continental plate coming this way. A lot of times, if you remember the North American plate, there's some ocean crust on it as well. So you're going to have some ocean crust here as well. But typically it's the oceanic plate, which is more dense, that starts to subduct underneath a continental plate. So what happens is it gets pushed down. Now, when this happens, remember, this is rock. You know, these rock layers are rather thick. So it's not just going to go smoothly down. What it's going to do is it's going to crumple right here and it's actually going to force the leading edge of this plate down. And what happens is you got a huge trench here. So this area right here is called a subduction zone. Now as it's going through, a lot of times ocean water gets trapped in here as well. And water has a unique property. It actually lowers the melting point of rock. So when that rock starts to melt, and it's kind of nice that I have a red pen, this less dense magma starts to rise to the surface. And that's why a lot of times you'll have volcanoes forming. And a lot of times they'll form a volcano arc. Because even though it's happening here, um, this plate is actually meeting all along this area. So all these volcanoes are forming. So you've got the islands of Japan formed an island arc. The Aleutian Islands form an island arc. So here we see Japan, and here's the trench, so here's the Pacific Plate that's actually subducting underneath the Pacific Plate. And it's kind of interesting, up here, this is one of those things, you know, when you look at a picture, you don't really realize. This is where, you know, we had the large earthquake uh, a year ago, where they had so many problems in Japan, but this is actually the North American Plate. So you have the Eurasian Plate, you have the Pacific Plate, you have the North American Plate. You have this island arc of Japan. Japan you know, without volcanoes would not be there, but yet volcanoes and earthquakes that happen as a result of these plates coming together can also be devastating, and we've seen that happen in Japan over the years. Um, here's a picture just showing how you have South America, and you have, again, you have the Pacific Plate descending underneath, and you have these volcanoes here forming the Andes Mountains. So you have a subduction zone. Now sometimes it's um, not just always two oceanic plates that come together, sometimes it's two continental plates come together. And continental plates, if we remember back to our rocks unit, these are made out of mainly, and you can also refer back to, I think it was day two of the notes, these are basically made of what type of material? If you're thinking granitic type material, you're thinking right. These tend to be less dense. And typically when an oceanic crust and a continental plate comes together, it's the oceanic plate. If I back up here a few slides, this oceanic plate goes down underneath because it's made up of a heavier, more dense basalt or basaltic type rock. Where the granitic type rock is less dense. And if you remember from our density that we've talked about in many, many units, the less dense material stays on top, the more dense material is what subducts. But when we get two continental plates, both of these are made up of granitic type materials. So what happens is you have a huge collision. Now a lot of times one plate may start to go underneath the other plate. A lot of times you have a plate connected to an oceanic plate. For example, you saw that right here where you have this continental, it's connected to part of an ocean, you know, ocean crust where it's going to be more basaltic. So this plate may 
start to go oops sorry so this plate may start to go underneath but it's not going to completely subduct because it's both less dense but what you get is when it's coming together and it's coming together in a major way you have the pushing up this is where you have folded mountains and the Himalayan mountains are a really good example the Himalayan mountains aren't done growing they're gonna keep getting larger and larger and larger so even though you have the Indian plate it, it, it's, it's losing the battle because it's so much smaller it's not necessarily going to completely subduct. Now, eventually, India will cease to exist because as the plates come together, you know, it's going to keep pushing out. The Himalaya mountains are going to keep get pushing bigger and bigger. But I don't know if we have a good picture of it. Yeah, so, but we can see right here that the ocean is behind it. So eventually, this more dense basaltic type rock is going to come in here. Here, he's got granitic type rock. So as it keeps coming together and it keeps you know, making that collision, eventually you're going to get to this part of the plate and then it's going to start subducting underneath. So even though it's going underneath, it, it, it's going underneath, let me get my pen in the correct spot, but it's not necessarily going way down, it's not necessarily melting all the way because you don't have those huge volcanoes. Volcanoes aren't that, you know, they're not, the Himalayan mountains aren't typically volcanic in nature. So when we back up, um, if you have an oceanic plate coming in here, it's going to subduct because it's, it's, it's more dense. It's your basaltic type rock. And as it goes down, it's going to create magma. You're going to, a lot of times, get volcanoes there. But when you get two continental plates come together, you, get vo you don't get volcanoes. You get mountains because of the large collision that you see happening here. It's kind of like a large um, bulldozer here in Wisconsin. It's like when you're plowing snow. And here, here's your plow. And that snow just keeps building up in front of the snow plow. And basically the Eurasian plate is plowing up the Indian plate. Now the last type of boundary we're going to talk about is transform fault boundary. This is when two plates slide past each other. And scientists say it has a shear force. And every once in a while you hear about shear forces. It's, you know, it, it's when things are going past each other. You know, something gets sheared off. It's when two forces are opposing each other, uh, but they're sliding past each other. They're not necessarily going directly at each other. And most transform faults are found in the ocean floor. And most of them are actually associated with divergent plate boundaries. So when we, if we were to look at the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and I think I have a slide of it coming up next, you don't have one long continuous divergent plate boundary. But what you have is you have thin strips. For example, here's one. Here's one. And this plate is moving one way. Now you notice over here where there's another strip, it's moving this way. So here's your transform fault boundary. You would have another transform fault boundary on the other side. So typically they're commonly offset the active spreading ridges producing zigzag plate margins and are generally defined by shallow earthquakes. In other words, as they're moving um, and opposed to each other, not necessarily against each other, but they're sliding past each other, you're going to get shallow earthquakes, earthquakes that aren't very deep inside the earth. So here, here's a neat picture. So here's the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Now you notice how it's not perfectly lined up. That's perfect, you know, seems to be pretty well lined up. But you notice how right here, it's not connected to here. So you got plates moving this way. You've got this plate moving this way. So right in here is where you have a transform fault boundary. Um, look at this. It's way over here. So this plate's moving this way. This plate's moving that way. So you're going to have transform fault boundaries. So all these layers right here is what creates your transform fault boundaries. Now, does it always happen in the ocean floor? No, no. There are actually a few good examples, and one of them's right here in the United States. It's the San Andreas Fault. If you've ever been to L.A., if you've ever been to San Francisco, um, you actually drove over the San Andreas Fault. It's one of those things. You have to drive over it in order to get to Southern California because this part of California is actually on the Pacific Plate. And this part of California is actually in the North American Plate. And these plates, you can see from these arrows here, are actually sliding past each other. So it's a transform fault boundary. Uh, the interesting thing is eventually, you know, San Francisco is actually on the North American plate, but if you go across the bay and just a little bit away from it, you actually get to the South American or to the Pacific plate. But what's interesting, San Francisco is moving this way, 
LA is moving this way, eventually the cities are going to be side by side with each other. So it's two plates that are moving in opposite directions. Oop, that must be the end of our note. So this is day two or day four of the notes. Again, as always, if, well, here's my screen that I just recorded. If you have any questions, just you know, ask me in class. I'd be happy to go over with this the, um, the slides with you, your notes with you. And Mr. Phillips would love to do the same. I love talking about geology. So if you have any ideas or questions, just ask in class. And as always, have a thank you for watching and have a good day.